The architecture of the Muslim world has always been distinctive and beautiful. From the beauty of Moorish architecture in Spain to the grandeur of Mughal architecture in India, Muslim architecture has been appreciated worldwide for centuries. For the region of Anatolia, architecture flourished under the Seljuks and the Ottoman Empire. The Seljuks of Rome ruled continuously in Anatolia from 1077 until 1307. Some of the innovations during the Seljuks reign are the introduction of the caravanserai, which were stops for travelers and caravans, as well as the introduction of covered courtyards and mosques. After the Seljuks of Rome collapsed, the Ottoman Empire rose to fill the power vacuum. During the reign of the Ottomans, massive building projects were undertaken in order to increase the dynasty's legitimacy and prestige. At the height of the Ottoman Empire and during the reign of Suleiman, mosques were the most important imperial building projects. Both empires had beautiful architectural projects still enjoyed to this very day. Among Ottoman and Seljuk architecture, caravanserai, also known as Han, were crucial not only to their culture but also their society. The word caravanserai can be broken down into two roots. The first is caravan, meaning a group of people traveling a long distance. Second, sarai, or sara, meaning a palace with enclosed courts. Caravanserai, also known as Khan in Persian, Mostly found along the Silk Road, caravanserai were essentially elaborate inns where travelers and merchants could rest for the night. Typically, caravanserai consisted of a large building with a square wall exterior. Inside laid a courtyard intended to accommodate merchants, animals, servants, and belongings. The exterior walls were not ornate but often had side towers which supported the buttresses of cylindrical, half-octagonal or half-hexagonal shape. However, the main entrance was incredibly ornate, often filled with decorative Quranic inscriptions and car carved tone patterns. The outside walls are often plain but may have side towers. In larger hans, there are gutter spouts in the shape of stylized animals' heads. The main portal is often elaborately decorated in carved stone with bands of geometric patterned elements, rows of Quranic inscriptions, and stalactite vaulting known as mukranas. Sources indicate it is estimated that there were over 250 caravanserai built in Seljuk times, being almost as crucial as mosques. Today, only about a hundred or so remain in varying condition, some intact, some restored, and some destroyed. The Turks began building hans when they arrived in Anatolia, the earliest dating in 1210 being built by the Sultan Gayaseddin Kehusrev I, but the majority were built during the days of the Seljuk Empire, from 1220 to 1250. There are six caravanserai that were of particular importance known as the Sultan Hans because they were commissioned directly by the reigning Sultan. At the base, the functions of Hans were to provide safety, shelter, and services to tradesmen. Safety was first ensured by thick stone walls, a single entrance with a wooden bar to secure it, roof watch patterns, small slit windows, buttresses, and crenellations. Shelter was given to animals through the inclusion of stables which had bedding and food available. There were also accommodations for travelers including raised loading dock platforms which helped alleviate the labor typical of loading and unloading goods. Among the services applied to travelers were bathing areas, storage, religious facilities, food supplies and ewans which were large open spaces enclosed on three sides of the courtyard and set above the animals for nice days. While no two caravanserai were the same, they were a few attributes they all shared. First, they are all rectangular or square and built of thick, tall blocks of honey-colored local limestone to ensure safety from raids. There was only one entrance which screened the entering and leaving merchants and provided defense as well as dwellings for guards. The outer walls were fortified with towers at the corners and along the side walls made a smooth stone that was not decorated. Additionally, drain spouts were usually shaped like animal or human heads. There was always a vast courtyard which held the loading and unloading of the caravans and also served as stables for the animals. The ground cells along the outskirts of the courtyard were most important as they held the majority of the services offered. These included bathrooms, baths, treasuries, accounting and exchange offices, granaries, storage rooms, repair shops, and more. Above these cells held sleeping quarters which were heated and illuminated by built-in fireplaces, candles, and lamps. At the end of the courtyard was another large entrance leading to a poorly lit barrel vaulted ceiling room where the guards kept goods and animals and were stored in the winter months. Interestingly, 
The walls contained built-in stone water troughs. Of course, there was also an area dedicated to prayer, to which there was an internal staircase. Caravanserai were normally placed near a water such as a river or stream and generally had interior water systems consisting of drainage and sewers. These were what provided the baths and fountains of their waters. One of the best ways to explore any culture is through the lives of its common people and how they lived their lives. The easiest way to do this is to look at the important elements of their lives, especially their homes and how they were built, and the tombs and how they were buried. Both the Ottomans and the Seljuks had a very different manners of living, and this is clearly demonstrated in their architectural styles and methods. The Seljuks, located on the Anatolian Peninsula, used a style of architecture common to the area and to traditional Islamic ways of living. Buildings were constructed largely from either stone or mud brick, similar to North American adobe, and followed the courtyard style, wherein the square complex was surrounded by a wall and featured inward-facing rooms centered around an open interior area, often featuring a fountain or fruit trees. These rooms would be divided into visiting rooms towards the front, various servants' quarters, and a private family area in the back. This style had the advantage of being fortified, as well as protecting the household's women from the gaze of strange men and allowing for the religiously required separation of a man's various wives. A unique aspect of Seljuk architecture was that they had a clear Persian influence, but refrained from using the brick construction the Persians were famous for, instead using rough cut stone. The Ottomans, on the other hand, used a different style of living, at least within Istanbul. Being a people from the steppes and now populating a dense urban area previously occupied for centuries by Europeans, the Ottoman houses were typically multi-storied and featured a white plaster exterior on a wooden frame. The style was very distinct and made for the use of wood resources that were made available to the empire from its holdings in the Balkans. Courtyards were largely reserved for larger estates, wealthier family homes, imperial palaces, and more rural locations. These styles were largely different due to the unique environment each occupied. The Seljuk Empire was a mixture of Persian and Arabian styling and construction, and Ottoman homes had echoes of the empire's western borders. Both were very efficient ways of living and suited to both the environment and the inhabitants. Both the Seljuks and the Ottomans used a very similar style of tomb construction. The great leaders would attach their tombs to large mosques, and the tombs would feature ceramic mosaics and Islamic art and inscriptions. They were almost indistinguishable, and one clearly evolved into the other. Under both the Seljuks and the Ottomans, madrasas were considered an institutionalized form of education, which was free for the public. The emphasis on what kind of education varied from each dynasty. Before the Ottomans, there were around a total of 42 madrasas. At the height of the Ottoman rule, there were 82 madrasas. Madrasas were constructed around the mosque, offering a variety of levels and specialized areas of education. The madrasas had a hierarchical system, where the most prestigious and higher madrasas had better paid teachers. The general structural layout of madrasas split in two types, as open court and covered court. They were often built on rectangular areas, mostly open courted. Many madrasas resembled caravanserais in its architecture. The courtyard would often have a dome and the walls of the rooms would face the courtyard. Under the Seljuks of Rome, there was an unprecedented number of madrasas because they were committed to learning and spreading knowledge. Anatolia had a, also had a strong Byzantine and Christian heritage which intermingled with Central Asian Turkic nomadic, Northern Mesopotamia, and Crusader culture. The integration to these different traditions is reflected in Seljuk architecture. For example, the Gok Madrasa features carved stone, typical of Armenian architecture, alongside brick, a common material of Iran and Central Asia. The Gok Madrasa is composed of an outdoor courtyard, 
two floors, and four elons. Another great example of Seljuk architecture is the Karate Madrasa built in Konya in 1252, which can be considered the apex of Seljuk small space design, also the incorporation of a well-advanced decoration scheme, essentially from mosaics of glazed tiles with Sufi mysticism and symbolism. The concept of madrasas, which was seen in the Ottoman Empire starting from the 10th century, drifted apart over time from the philosophical thought at the beginning and became institutions which reinitiated the Sunni Islamic opinion and legal understanding. The politicization of madrasas was key to its significance during the Ottoman time period. Before the Ottomans, only religious studies were emphasized in madrasas. By contrast, under the Ottomans, religious studies and rational sciences like philosophy, mathematics, natural sciences, and such were taught. Early Ottoman madrasas maintained the spatial configuration developed under the Seljuks of Anatolia, which was based on the Iwan plan. Such plan consisted of a courtyard towards which the Iwans or classrooms were opened. One of the most notable madrasas during the Ottoman time period is the one designed by one of the greatest architects, Mimar Sinan, called the Rustam Pasha Madrasa. It is an independent madrasa unattached to any complexes or mosques which makes it unique. Generally, the building is a composition of an octagon inscribed within a square. The cells or rooms surround the large courtyard, each with its own dome. A well-known mosque of the Seljuk Empire was the Great Mosque of Isfahan. The city of Isfahan was occupied in 1051 and under Arab Aslan. It became the capital of the empire. The heart of the Seljuk city was arranged around a square at the entrance facade of the existing Great Mosque of the late 9th century. The original form of the Great Mosque was built by the Umayyad dynasty and is still traceable in the present plan. It was Arab type in baked bricks with cylindrical piers supporting a flat wooden roof. Prior to becoming a mosque, it is said to have been a house of worship for Zoroastrians. This mosque is one of the oldest mosques still standing in Iran and was built in the four Iwan architectural style, placing four gates face to face. An Iwan is a vaulted open room. The Kilba Iwan on the southern side of the mosque was vaulted with geometric subdivisions of a squinch, cupola, or core bell during the 13th century. Construction under the Seljuks included the addition of two brick dome chambers. Between 1072 and 1075, a great brick south dome of 49 feet in diameter was raised on the old supports by the order of Nizam al Muk the famous vizier of Malik Shah, and was larger than any dome known at its time. The North Dome was constructed a year later and was equal to the South Dome. The next additions to the original mosque during the Seljuk Empire were the four Iwans and the North Portal paired minarets. The famous Soleimani Mosque of the Ottoman Empire is located on the third hill of Istanbul, Turkey. It is the second largest mosque in the city. The Soleimani Mosque was built on the order of Sultan Suleiman. The mosque incorporates blended Islamic and Byzantine architectural elements. It combines tall slender minarets with large dome buildings supported by half domes in the style of Byzantine church Hagia Sophia. The design of the Suleimani mosque also indicates Suleiman's self-conscious representation of himself as the second Solomon. It references the Dome of the Rock, which was built on the site of the Temple of Solomon. The mosque has a monumental courtyard on its west side. The courtyard at the Soleimani Mosque is colonnaded peristyle with columns of marble, granite, and porphyry. At the four corners of the courtyard are four minarets, a number which is only allowable to sultans. Princes and princesses could only construct two minarets, others only one. The minarets have a total of 10 galleries, which by tradition indicates that Suleiman I was the 10th Ottoman Sultan. The main dome is 174 feet high and has a diameter of 90.2 feet. At the time it was built, the dome was the highest in the Ottoman Empire when measured from sea level. The interior of the mosque is almost a square, 194 feet in length and 190 feet in width. 
The dome consists of semi-domes and to the north and south arches with windows supported by enormous porophylls monoliths. Some areas in the Soleimani Mosque consist of interior decorations of zinc tiles. White marble, ivory, and mother of pearl are also in simple designs. As with other imperial mosques in Istanbul, the Soleimani Mosque was designed as a complex with adjacent structures to serve both religious and cultural needs. The original complex consisted of the mosque itself, a hospital, a primary school, public baths, a caravarsarai, four Quran schools, a specialized school for learning the hadith, a medical college, and a public kitchen which served food to the poor. Many of these structures are still in existence.